oppression, racism, sexism, homophobia, those kinds of things that needs to, for example, box policy, right? What kind of policy I'm talking about? It looks like Sanders Medicare for all, for example, that, is, that will specifically tackle the lack of healthcare access problem. There is America people, for example, who is constantly denied of insurance from their company and jobs, for example, exactly with Medicare for all, it's going to take, uh, you know, able to solve this, right? The problem then is that it needs a huge amount of money and political capital to actually fight, right? So why then is this particular tokenistic glorifying thing will actually prevent that, uh, actually prevent those progress to actually manifest, right? Simple. One, we think that it will actually, you know, the idea of glorifying first is actually a maneuver for political, you know, for political uh, parties to actually get cookie points from minority people, right? To actually get them to vote them again. What does it look like? It looks like Biden highlighting the identity and the position of these particular people, for example, as a big win for minority. It looks like when Obama was the first black male president, it was actually glorified as a win for black community, right? It makes people assume that Obama being the first black president will automatically be a good reason for black people to celebrate because their problems will automatically be understood will automatically be you know brought to light and will automatically be solved for example because a person of their color is actually sitting in office right the problem then is that this particular narrative usually stops there right that they do not necessarily solve uh, that they don't necessarily ask them to actually you know do the extra step of actually crafting the policies that is actually the hard part that we need for example for these problems to actually solve they do not necessarily are being asked to garner this political capital, for example, to actually go together and fight against the systemic oppression that we want. The narrative that is prominent currently celebrates them actually being appointed, but does not necessarily ask that, but, but you know, focuses on that specifically and does not actually ask them to do the other things. What it looks like then is that the policies that we actually need that will actually create, you know, a widespread benefit for everyone on the ground is not actually being put to light, right? Within the comparison on our side is simple. When we do not celebrate this particular thing, when we celebrate only on, you know, like whether the problems are actually solved or not, whether these, uh, whether, uh, these people are actually doing the things that is going to be better for this minority or not, when we don't, for example, want to acknowledge that just because they're black, it means that they're going to, you know, care for black people's specific problems. What it happens is that we're going to put pressure on them actually, you know, uh, actually crafting these particular specific policies that will act them to stop it, right? Because then the focus on that is put on them is not on whether their identity is important, but whether they are them in that particular situation, in that particular position, is able to utilize their, their political power to actually solve the problem that is specific to that particular issue, right? It looks like when you're a health minister, what we need is not for you to be black or what not for you to be, you know, like Native American. What we need is that for you to care for the problems of how black people and Native American in accordance to the health issue, right? It's better because then they are the they are the pressure that is put on them is to actually solve these particular problems, to actually do the hard stuff and gain, gain the political capital needed to actually solve this, right? But second harm, right? Usually these minorities who are the first are not even representative anyway, right? What does it look like? It looks like Kamala Harris, who is a rich, who is a very rich, who just happens to be black who does not actually have the act of everyday black experience for example this is why she's willing for example back then to take corporate money for example because she feels like it's the way it's the white you know like the the way that the the, the, the wall street way goes for example but the understanding that that comes of the expense of black people right the problem is that it, they misrepresent what the minorities need in congress or cabinet right and the media amplifies it because they're in a very high position the problem then it makes it harder for us to acknowledge the particular problem the minorities are having, for example, currently, because the image that we have is a person of uh, color in power who spreads, you know, ideas about what being black looks like, but from, uh, you know, like Menara Gading, from an ivory tower who is not, you know, in touch with reality, right? That is why Kamala being tough on crime was a thing that is very problematic, right? Because that's not what the black people needed, because they are the main, uh, you know, like, harm of that particular policy and taking away the spotlight of competent leaders with solative policies, very proud to propose.
All right. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Uh, before that, um, oh, okay. So the L, but the LO is consented to be recorded, right? Um, for all, all LO is consented and the LO is not. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you very much. All right, sure, sure. Uh, okay, so the committee, I think, should take notes on that. If you would like to record, then you should stop at the DLO and start recording again at the member. Right. Uh, thank you, Prime Minister, for your speech. To respond to the case of the Prime Minister, I would like to call upon the leader of opposition. Floor is yours. Don't forget to state your POI preference. You're here. I'm audible. Yep, you're audible. All right, cool. Um, POI preference, unmuting yourself, but do it on like five minutes or so. Um, because it's annoying. Um, but I cannot see the chat either because, yeah, I use Word and I have to close the Zooms. Um, anyway, starting my speech in three, two, one. OG is weird, right? Because their narrative is assuming that the spotlight that comes with, with this narrative, that the, the focusing on individuals being the first of their particular identity group and whatnot, we are still going to be dominated by the majority, i.e. Joe Biden is overriding Kamala Harris, being uh, the narrative of Kamala and the spotlight of Kamala Harris being the first um, you know, people of color um, ex expositions and whatnot, right? Which is weird because like, you cannot, you cannot assume that majority will going to have that kind of spotlight, right? Because the spotlight is going to be focused on those individuals. That is to say that Kamala Harris is the one who actually take the speech and not Joe Biden per se, right? That is to say that means that the Joe, uh, that the Kamala Harris will be the one who actually get the spotlight and not the Joe Biden per se. Maybe Joe Biden will get like certain extents of the certain um, certain extent of the reputations and the spotlight and whatnot. But the main focus will be the Kamala Harris because they're the one actually the first of the identity group. The, the, Regardless of the struggle that they face, right? Look, I think that what oppositions propose here in opening oppositions that we support the narrative that you know we need to have like this kind of media spotlight toward this kind of individuals being the first of the identity group when they actually accomplish a certain goal and a, and a position of power where it's actually like in the past it's actually very very in, uh, unimaginable for this kind of identity identity group to actually achieve such power or like such positions, right? That. Is a uh, that is uh, you know we still have disclaimer that probably the one actually the first is actually like we're still going to commit uh, you know we're still going to uh, acknowledge that they have the, the the privilege to do so like for example like, like exactly what we we can see it what like what Kamala Harris Kamala Harris did it's like we are the first but they are rich for example but that but that does not mean that actually number one they are actually does not actually like suffer a same discriminations for our uh, regardless of their financial backgrounds that's number one. But secondly, that does not mean to say that you know the uh, you know the the positions only going to be achievable by the rich people because I think this is the starting point and the first mover for for this identity group to actually uh, to actually create legacy for other identity group or like other minority individuals to actually achieve the same positions in the future. I'm going to read it. I'm going, I'm going to intertwine all the rebuttals in my arguments, which is like talking about like minority, minority equality and like uh, defeating the systemic problem with opening governance proposed, which is actually going to happen in opposition, in opposition house because they never mechanize how actually they can gather such um, supportance in the south house sense, uh, you know, in absence of this narrative, right? So I'm going to prov provide to you only one argument. Is that why this is important to actually attach this kind of identity to success? Because notice that most likely this uh, this motion is talking about the minority group, right? I think that both sides of the house need to concede that we want to protect minority, because, uh, we want minority equality and whatnot. So we need to focus on what exactly identity, uh, what, what exactly minority group is actually facing? Because not like its identity face a specific struggle. This is prevalent in structurally disenfranchised group where they have huge different starting point in comparisons to majority populations. I.e., education access means that like you know the people of color cannot actually probably they are being this influenced to actually go to such private school, for example, or like, or, or like even like, you know, um, an average school and that they provide average knowledge and whatnot, right? But secondly, it's the language barrier that probably this minority can uh, actually uh, face 
that makes them cannot access in intellectual resources, for example, book at, uh, books at library, for example, or like some job that needs certain level of proficiency of the language, for example, right? Therefore, they are actually less likely to being hired, to, to, to being hired, for example, or like general social discrimination that they actually face in the street or even in the, in the workforce, for example, like uh, most likely job promotion and access in US, for example, are identity-based or like elections and so, and so on and so far, right? So they're less likely to be, to be promoted and whatnot, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that this kind of minority Minorities actually face a specific struggle, and you know this minority, uh, you know this minority group experience such harsh hardships that people inside those identity group or this kind of minority generally think in in the past that such achievement was impossible in the current conditions. That you cannot be a black president or like black politicians who are actually going to winning the race. You cannot be the first astronaut who went into Jupiter, for example, because you can because you, because in order to do that, you need to pass millions of candidates of white people who have more accessibility of such resources, for example, right? So therefore. The celebration of such achievement in outside the house will uh, actually important that, and, and comes into two parts of benefit. Number one, principally, this is a form of retribution because society has been complicit toward the struggle of this individual face in the past during the process of achieving the achievement. Um, just a slight note that all the discrimination that I, that, I, that I described is actually uh, also faced by Kamala Harris, regardless she is rich, okay? Like she is actually attending private school, she is still being discriminated, right? So like this is this is a form of retribution because you know the, the society complicit toward it, right? Toward the struggle, so therefore need to be a proportional amount of compensations when actually actually achieve those kind of uh, achievement, right? Where whether the access of climbing social ladder, for example, or like the media spotlight and attentions that previously they are deprived of as minority group, or even like more funding toward these individuals in regards to their achievement, for example, like these kind of black scientists can actually continue their their scientific and whatnot. They can lead the teams and whatnot, right? Second second practical benefit then is the the momentum that we create counterfactual narrative that such hardship can be overcome. That is possible for you to achieve such position and it should not stop there. How, why is that likely? Well, this is to engage on, on, on how like it, it, it only going to be tokenistic and doesn't like face the real problems. Because most likely when, when the celebrations, uh, the celebration that this uh, narrative creates does not stop at being the first only, but throughout the social discussion that is ignited by the celebration, it brings the question to society of whether or not it stops there, whether or not this is just a one wonder hit, for example, right? So it creates incentive of legacy coming from the society that manifests into continuous funding of the minority group. This is the exclusive benefit that opening governments never actually characterize, right? This is not only accessed by echo chamber minor and minority groups, but more donations coming from external group like the majority also going to happen, right? Because in capitalism world, they reward merit. Therefore, highlighting that these identity groups also has merit means that we're going to have more donations, right? So therefore, if you're talking about like, we want to have more participation and opening government's concern is, I think that it only happens in outside the house when they actually highlight such merit in capitalism no, no. world. But regardless, all these six, the narrative of breaking the barrier in, in outside the house can mitigate the discrimination. Because not the, discrim the discrimination toward the society, uh, toward this minority group, usually comes under the narrative of that you cannot achieve this because of your birth lottery that you that just because you are actually like black you, therefore you know you are your i didn't uh, you're like you automatically a minority and you cannot access such preference and whatnot which is very unfair because this is something that they cannot control as human being right you cannot like choose like you cannot choose options of whether or not you can be a boy or a girl you can be like mexican or like uh, uh caucasians and whatnot right so for the so therefore i think this is going to mitigate the discriminations that you know the narrative for that you cannot achieve this because you're because of your birth lottery we're going to be de defeated because look even like kamala harris can be ex-president so i can be a president right so i can like struggle as the same as Kamala Harris, okay? You can struggle the same as Michelle Obama, who is previously poor, for example, and whatnot. Right? So this, I think, this is where the explicit benefit coming from opening options comes from. We are very much opposed. Thank you very much for your speech. To respond to the case of the leader of opposition, I would like to call upon the deputy prime minister. Please don't forget to mention your POI preference. Thank you. Hi, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Okay, cool. Um, no preferred gender pronouns. POI preferences through chat or raise hand or turn on your camera and wave. Setting up my timer. Starting my speech in three, two, one. 
I think at best that the benefit that you can take out of OO's case is basically pride. It's basically you feeling like you're seeing someone of your minority being able to achieve something and you feel proud of them. But that's not the most strategic benefit for you to take within this debate today. When you compare it to the benefit coming from our side of the house, right? We characterize to you that what we want out of political candidates or anyone rising into positions of power as a person of color is proper policies and merit things that directly benefit us beyond things as jargonistic or as metaphysical as pride, as feeling happy and feeling proud of other people, right? Because you can't eat pride. Pride does not feed you. Pride does not feed your family. Pride does not let your brother out of jail when he's, uh, for example, being thrown because of on crime and strictness on all these other things that is directly like against black people, right? So what we want is that exactly policies and merit instead of identity, right? This is important because this is a direct trade-off, right? Because this is a trend that's context, right? When you push for candidates for positions of power, you talk about uh, identity and people directly being, uh, am, I, am, I, am I robotic right now? Hello? Uh, yeah. I uh, passed my timer, but like. Yeah, I also passed my timer. It's okay. And me, it's okay, okay, cool. <sighs> okay. Um, continuing. Um, if I'm assuming right, that is um, satu minute lima belas detik. Okay. Uh, continuing my speech. So basically, there's this trend of pushing specific candidates that are only like specific to that identity because you don't want them speaking over that particular minority, right? That means that all the other benefits, no matter how good your policy is, no matter how meritable, how respectful you are of that particular minority, you will always want to push someone else because it's tokenistically good. No one really understands the concept of speaking over and there's no direct merit coming from this, right? So we don't understand. So um, before I go on to my extension, one response, right? When they talk having more candidates when you have maturation, I need to remind you that we do not live in you have social media, you have all these other things, even though you don't necessarily boom it up as like you're the first from this particular minority, there are already organized movements uh, designed to help you achieve betterment within that particular movement. There is a possibility for you to garner donation as part of minority, even without that kind of publication, right? So all the other rebuttals will be integrated into my speech. So basically, I have two extensions regarding why this part of normalizing is particularly bad and why we can't let corporates and governments get away with this, right? So basically, Algard has already extensively explained to you regarding how um, we're going to, for example, have better policies. I'm going to explain how, right? First of all, when you try to put these other things, I think that the benefit that all try to explain but fail to do so is regarding how you're going to normalize it, right? When things that are previously seen as impossible is something that's possible to do now, right? But that's not necessarily the case in the current status quo. When you talk about normalizing, the most important people who needs to normalize the ideas that are not, for example, misogynistic or racist are corporates and governments, right? In terms of employment or, for example, when you're uh, trying to get the members of the cabinet who are not elected to, for example, public elections, right? For example, secretary and so on and so forth. We think that in these two particular areas and of the industry, they are merit-based, right? The reason why you need a normalization in the past is because it was based off studies that are untrue. Studies that say, for example, oh, uh, women have a tendency to leave work much more easily and they are not dedicated to work. For studies, for example, like, oh, black people simply do not have the capacity to understand as quickly as all these other things. These are studies that were real that hindered these companies and these governments from, for example, taking them in, they are proven to be untrue right now. There are already studies covering this. There are already studies that are at a base level. It's already need to go to normalize right now. It's no longer things like, oh, this is the tokenistic first Black women. This is the tokenistic first trans person, right? What we need right now is transparency, right? If it is true that there is a candidate coming from a minority that is rejected, we need clear parameters and guidelines as to why they were rejected, as opposed to just seeing one of or two of them who achieve success, right? That's what we need better. We need to make sure that they're properly exercising their merit, right? But second of all, let's talk about who receives the normalization, right? When they talk to you about this being a form of retribution and compensation and so on and so forth, that means that there is a form of normalization happening in minorities itself, right? I'm going to explain better what happens within those minority com uh, communities and why it's going to be much worse. First of all, when they talk to you about 
these people thinking this was yeah, previously impossible, thinking about such hardships and so on and so forth. First of all, this is bad and this is going to harm their dignity because these are constant reminders of their situation, right? After living in America for so long and after such an old and proud country, how come that the minority only reach the position of power only now, right? This is a constant reminder of their place. And we just think that that's not a good nuance and a good mood to bring to everyone else. But second of all, this is also very assumptive in the sense that when you play someone as the forefront of a particular identity, you're going to be assuming every single person within that minority agrees with this particular leader, right? That means that uh, you're, you're speaking of them regarding what they need, and we just don't think that's good. Third harm is that you're going to indoctrinate obedience, right? When you have an unfair and unproportionate amount of like uh, uh, glorification and praising these particular uh, candidates coming from particular identities, that means you're uh, habituating the people to understand that, oh, for example, AOC is such a great candidate, Kamala Harris is such a great candidate, and so on and so forth, right? This is bad because, first of all, that means that they are going to invalidate any type of criticism as attacks directly towards their particular identities, right? This is why it's hard in the current status quo for you to criticize, for example, how Kamala Harris has a lack of action and doesn't actually do anything in the current status quo. And so is the case with any other people of color, other uh, publicly elected officials, right? We think that in the case of Kacang Lupa Kulit, in which they don't contribute back to the community and the minority in which they came from, is an actual problem that's happening right now, right? Talking about how Kamala Harris is eventually abandons her black constituents by making sure that there is a tougher crackdown on crime and made for betterment is going to be seen as, for example, oh, you're just trying to take down these uh, legends, right? But fourth of all, we think that what's worse about all this is that you're habituating them for complacency, right? When they talk to you about, oh, at least finally there's one of them, that you're not allowed to demand and ask for more because getting this one particular candidate into that particular position of power is already such a struggle in the first place and that you should already be grateful, right? You should be habituated with accepting all these other things. We think that complacency is such a bad, uh, bad thing for you to accept in the country's for, right? What we want instead is, for example, constantly pushing all these agendas. It's okay if you don't have someone of the same identity and positions of power. We would rather have a white Bernie who's uh, who willingly supports a Medicare for all and is outright very public with his opinions on ra racism and all these other things and his support towards black women, as opposed to Kamala Harris, who sits pretty and does nothing. Proud, of, uh, proud to propose. Thank you very much for your speech. Um, for the outcome, can you stop recording for a moment because the DLO is not consented to be stopped recorded? Thank you very much for your speech. To close the government case, I would like to call by the government web. I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. When CO came in this debate and talked about how we owe them a celebration on how they have worked really, really hard to achieve this kind of exposition to begin with, therefore we should celebrate them at the end of the day. We as CG do not believe that this is a great idea, right? My member already told to you on how this, uh, this kind of narrative actually creates and perpetuates stereotype within uh, within uh, community or, or within public that say that this kind of thing is very unnatural and this kind of thing is uh, very un untypical of this kind of community to begin with. Therefore, it's going to actually perpetuate on how we are going to see this community as very different from us. And any kind of credit that is being given to this kind of individual at the end of the day is not going to go to the community. It's not going to be the betterment for the community, but is for the glorification of this individual to begin with. And we regret that at the end of the day, right? In my speech, I'm going to talk about two things. First, let's talk about impact. And second, let's talk about uh, social progression at the end of the day, right? First, about impact. Opening opposition claim on how uh, they want to have retribution and momentum by actually attaching this kind of success story to their identity as a, a person of color or a female of color, for example. We say that my first response is that this don't happen. Because when you are actually attaching this kind of success story, you're not actually attaching the success story to the community itself, right? You're actually uh, you're actually attaching this to the hard work of this individual at the end of the day. We are we, we don't say that we should not uh, give credit where it's due, right? When this individual actually try hard 
for them to actually uh, be in a certain position. But we say that this kind of glorification did not need the target that uh, both uh, opening, uh, opposition benches wanted to have to begin with, right? We say that having the word first or having this kind of label with the first women of color to achieve exposition means that this is not normal, right? You are indirectly saying that this kind of community should not be in that position to begin with and saying that most of this co uh, member of community is incapable of achieve, achieving success, right? And it actually takes a very extraordinary individual to actually break this kind of stereotype to begin with. The moment this happens, you actually detach. You are actually detaching this individual from the community itself, right? Uh, uh, Barack Obama is not is no longer being seen as a, a, a African American or a black individual uh, at the end of the day. It's uh, he's being seen as an extraordinary, uh, no longer a, a, a very special black uh, or African American individual at the end of the day. The moment you have this kind of separation or detachment from this kind of community, any credit will never go to the community at the end of the day, right? Which also lead me to my second point about progression, right? When OG came into this debate, claiming on how they want to have a better policy making at the end of the day on how this kind of individual should do better for their community and etc. We don't we do Go not on. understand what OG is debated. No, thank you. Because well, they try to explain on how it's beneficial, they never explain how they are going to actually get this kind of policy to begin with. Right? All of their argument is very assumptive that these people are going to do good on how this individual are going to actually give back to the community and etc right we don't say that this individual is bad at the end of the day but we don't we are we do not understand how are you going to be sure that this individual is going to give back to the society on how they're going to represent their community greatly we don't we we don't think uh opening government take this debate right because in cg we say uh we want to create changes on how do we social interaction happen within a community, not only in political spectrum, but on daily, on daily life, on how this narrative actually create and perpetuate stereotype to begin with. That's what we uh, what we, we don't like for this kind of narrative from closing government, right? On progression as well, on how opening opposition claim to us on how this kind of thing is the only way for, for them to allow minority to actually speak up and, and to let the first, uh, this kind of uh, label first to take the mic and say, what they really think about this kind of community or oppression and etc right we say that uh og already uh, already attacked this kind of uh thing by saying that you know, you know uh, think, uh people come from better background etc what we say uh closing government is going to extend to this kind of explanation but saying why then even if this kind of individual came from a poor background on yeah, how they I struggle and etc uh, even if Kamala Harris is not uh, is oppressed in their private school and etc., and why this is still actually bad, right? Giving this kind of spotlight to begin with is actually bad. First point is about how this actually uh, gives a smoke screen on how black people are already able to achieve something to begin with. For example, right? For example, uh, when Barack Obama actually get a pre uh, presidential position, we are a lot of people are saying why should we help black people, black community at the end of the day because they're already uh, capable of achieving this kind of greatness to begin with right we say that this is very bad for the progression of social uh, for social progress for this kind of community to begin with people are not going to realize that this kind of structural problem is kind of in, uh, inherently bad uh, systemic po uh, policy still actually exists and then this kind of individual uh, rise up to the power uh, rise up to the power is not because their community is better off, but because they are very lucky with their, you know, education or their work, for example, this is the kind of thing that we regret under closing government, right? And second point about how this kind of hard work and determination of this kind of story to begin with, that this individual are going to talk about when they become, uh, you know, the position of X, for example, is going to be actually directed toward this in individual, it's the quality of the individual, not the quality of the community, right? This is something that uh, opposition need to actually clarify at the end of the day. No, thank you. No. So what, what uh, closing government has bring in this debate is to think. First, we already explained to you on how this is the structural problem, on how this kind of narrative in itself already bring a lot of harm to the community itself, right? Celebrating and giving spotlight, give uh, uh, society to think. First, they're going to actually stereotype this kind of individual uh, to begin with. This, this individual is not worth it to be, uh, this kind of community is not worth it at that position to begin with. And second, we also, uh, we, uh, we also already explain to you on how this spotlight actually gives individual uh, a, a, a credit where they are not supposed to be, right? For example, you are going to actually achieve some, certain position because, just because you are black, for example. This is a kind of label that's going to exist within community, within society, when uh, op opposition case actually run at the end of the day, right? 
So why should CG win this debate? First, CG, CG is the only uh, team that actually explained to you the root of the problem on how we are going to solve this problem by actually changing the fabric of society on how we are actually interacting with each, with each other, on how we want the society to actually see other community as the same. There are no boundaries, there are no, uh, there is no separation between this community and the, the, at the end of the day. And second, we also prove to you all the practical benefit on how this kind of thing is not only going to to be beneficial for person already in power, but also the community that they came from, for example, black community or female of color, for example. This is exactly CG uh, contribution in this debate. Thank you. Thank you very much for your speech. To close the Um, that's that's am I audible? Um, yep, you're audible. Okay. Um, okay. If I have like, if my voice is crack because of internet connections or whatever, please notify me right away in the chat and all POI in chat, please do not interrupt me. I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. Adjudicator, I think what you need to notice is on the government side of the house, they aren't going to only have coverage. They only will have positive coverage or positive feedback or campaign or celebrations or whatever, only when there are good policy paths or when they create good footprint. They talk about Medicare for all. They talk about yeah other policies that are they think is good, right? I think there are two major reasons why it's unreliable for them to set such a high standard of requirement to create a good campaign for candidates that are the first representing minority community, right? First of all, there are internal debate about whether uh, concerning about, uh, in, in, uh, when we're talking about Medicare for all, for example, there are internal debate in Democrats party voters who are also concerning about lessened subsidies for under industry sectors that's going to be allocated to Medicare. It's not something that will directly benefit people, especially when they live pay, uh, paycheck to paycheck. And secondly, there are external actors such as Republican Party that are aggressively against this, make it really hard for you to, uh, to uh, make sure that it's past the policy, right? The conclusion is, it's so hard for you to pass such a high standard of footprint in order for you to endorse, in order for you to create a campaign that are good or create a good positive campaign for these candidates. You can't make, uh, a, a, their trade-off is they cannot make make any positive campaign at all, right? That is so hard for them to achieve that, which is super bad because minorities, especially in the situations where they are constantly tell that they are bad or they are not a good representative, it's personal affirmation that is necessitate that comes from the campaign that highlighted the fact that they should be celebrated. It is, uh, it is, um, it is such a good, uh, uh, such a good act for them to be able to put their life on a spotlight and be able to achieve this, right? This is specific. This hardship specifically comes in closing oppositions, where the only team that realized that because opening oppositions only told you on how that it's creating or breaking the gas ceiling, but nobody really told you why is it so hard for them to do this, which is the prerequisite of the benefit that are very, very much less in governments out of the house, right? So we say that what's going to be highlighted at the end of the day in governments out of the house is the bad footprints of Kamala Harris making people unwilling to uh, be supportive to new, uh, unwilling to be supportive to new female presidents or even people are unwilling to opt in to become a part of government on politicians as a, as a female because there are such a high standard for them to be able to receive compliment and receive positive feedback, ladies and gentlemen. That is so bad, right? Under government side of the house. We say that as a back, as a black Indian female vice president, they have an even bigger barrier because she's not criticized only by the majority, but also from people from her race. Black people credit white politicians more for producing a decent policy simply because there is already a low expectations with politicians from their group. They have high expectations, especially uh, uh, because they assume literally all life of black matter will, black people will change because they are in power. The conclusion is even if they do not pass policy that are good, they still deserve all the credit and celebrations, which also tackle the case of closing government that highly centralized 
life on that, right? We said that secondly, even if you do not want to buy that, we say the harm are completely over generalizing and very much uh, the buy, right? By governments out of the house. Because even notice that in the future, when there are already more representative and people already warming up to the idea of female representations, the narrative of campaign will change in the future. People will be more critical. People will be more uh, demanding to uh, next representations. It's not what we need right now, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what's problematic. They only think about the idealism that should not be applied on the current status quo where there are very less representations or even people who are, uh, who are already voted and elected are still unsure about themselves. And we say that that is bad under their side of the house. But second of all, notice that uh, DPM of opening government is so weird, right? Because they told you there are no benefit of the having pride of celebrations. It's only pride and it's not policy without telling you how does necessarily creating a different campaign or not giving them any form of uh, any form of positive feedback or positive campaign will make them even much more motivated. I really don't get that. They just assume it happened. But second of all, the, if they say that impact isn't big enough, the impact of celebration isn't big enough, then why are they care enough to oppose it? If this is backflashing with their idea of on how that on how that is important because it's very overwhelming, right? Notice that for the debate to be fair, there needs to be an acknowledgement that there are impact that comes from this campaign of celebrations, right? Even if you're not buying this, notice that when we celebrate and highlight the fact that this is an achievement and the fact that this is a good progress, you are uh, the minds uh, you are ensuring the mindset of the representative figure that constantly opposed by people outside of their supporters, while people who drag down Kamala Harris or black artists or Asian artists that call to feminine, for example, and do not deserve their uh, do not deserve their popularity, for example. It's important for you to ensure that people would want to be to represent the community even further. There are people in the future who would want to do this. Benefit does not need to be as macro as in order for this to be uphold as a type of campaign that we like. You should not oppose this just because the benefit is not necessarily fixed on whether it's going to create any policy changes. We don't think you need to oppose that just because it's uh, uh, because at their at, at their side of the house you cannot achieve this either, right? Even if you change tactics of campaign, you cannot uh, ensure that there will be change all the time. We said it is, is, isn't true, right? especially if they're willing to put their life on the line whatsoever. But even if their demand is to create a good policy, we said that it's likely to happen under our side of the house comparisons to government. Because when you highlight that the fact that they're the first representative of community, the pressure is even bigger for them to be idealistic, right? For them to represent their community exactly because they're a big burden for them to do so. The fact that they have to create footprint, for example. You want to get reelected as an individual or you want to have a, uh, uh, to create a good goal that so many attentions are given to you. You do not want to live a good, a bad narrative of you're incapable as a, uh, as a representative, right? But even if you don't want to buy that even if they're just like a bad individual in general you uh when you're a representation there are other people after that counterbalance you internally democrats for example biggest voter comes from minority groups and also uh uh, allies of minority, they're a big burden and they're a big narrative for them uh, to uh, to uh, cater to that because especially Democrats isn't a cult-like voters like Republican who are very, very, who are no matter what your leaders do, they don't care, right? They care. The fact that they do not want to vote just because they're, uh, they they prefer Bernie Sanders even more shows you that the moment you shows yourself as a bad representative in general and you do not comply to all the uh, campaign promises that you give, uh, the concern of governments out of the house, uh, man, it's already seven. We don't need to PR all the time. It means that the uh, counterbalance will exist and you're not going to be able to operate and people will be suddenly so forgiving, especially when they're Democrats, the biggest voter of people of color and minority representations, right? Based on that reasons, we said that don't buy this overwhelming narrative or super dramatic uh, harm that are brought by uh, the whole government bench. Proud to close this debate.